This is a Witch Space News supplemental for Wednesday the 15th of December 2021 I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News we have information about a further patch incoming as problems persist with update 9 on PC and console. There's multiple chances to bag yourself loads of free arcs. Gutemeyer ships are heavily discounted. The terrorist known as Theta 7 is no more. And the Scorpion SRV devs are interviewed on Frontiers livestream and more. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. If you're wondering why you're seeing this video and it's not yet Friday then don't be alarmed. There is so much time critical Elite Dangerous news being generated in and around the game at the moment we thought it best to issue a midweek supplemental. So. Let's crack on. Frontier is hosting its annual countdown to the festive season again and, as with previous years, gifting free arcs points daily to any commander just for logging into the game from the 13th to the 25th of December. The arcs bonus started at 100 and, again as in previous years, is increasing. Today for example there's a 150 arcs bonus. Alongside the free bonus arcs they are also re-releasing some time limited slightly more exclusive chromed and golden paint jobs for ships with new ones for different ships being added every day. So if you're not seeing the paint job for your ship of chromed or golden choice hang in there there's every chance it'll appear before Christmas. The bonus arcs and paint jobs are completely platform and version neutral so you can take advantage if you're in Elite Dangerous Odyssey on PC or Elite Dangerous Horizons on PC and consoles. After the successful completion of a community goal earlier this month there are now significant discounts on all Gutemeyer ships if purchased in the Parisa, Simis and Cubio systems. The discount includes the GU97 fighter and the national debt inducing imperial cutter. Depending on your elite rank the discount can be as much as 30% reducing the cost of the blisteringly expensive luxurious removal van by as much as the national debt of a small country. Your rebuy for the vessel will be similarly reduced meaning the discount just keeps giving. To take advantage of the time limited discount you have until the 24th of December. The reign of terror perpetrated by the individual known only as Theta 7 apparently came to an end early this week when the cornered NMLA extremist detonated the Far God cult megaship they'd taken control of. The explosion aboard the megaship Sacrosanct in the Mudrid system saw the release of clouds of the terrorist signature Thargoid caustic material that not only killed Theta 7 but also a good few of T7's cohorts and a liberal sprinkling of Far God cultists who were being held hostage on their own ship. The terrorist leader and his gang had been cornered in the system by the superpowers joint anti-terrorist team known as ACT and were unable to jump their ship away. Immediately before detonating his caustic warheads Theta 7 broadcast a short video message that simply said ...the future will remember us. Whilst Theta 7 may be gone the NMLA, its cause and his followers still very much exist so it seems somewhat unlikely that the attacks will end with the death of the band's frontman but we'll see what the new year brings. Elsewhere in game the mysterious individual or indeed entity known as Salvation last week asked players to deliver experimental equipment to three megaships owned by Taurus Mining Ventures to enable what's been called Operation Trihammer firing Salvation's mysterious Thargoid killing super weapon in three systems suffering Thargoid incursion ...Delphi, Maya and Marope. 
An intercepted post battle damage assessment from the Delphi system indicated that 27% of the caustic cauliflower vessels in the system had been destroyed with 98% of the remaining threat being dispersed. The last time Salvation used their Death Star it cleared a single system but seemed to anger the witch space wasps even more causing them to return with a vengeance. As a result we now have 19 systems in a state of incursion each with its own associated burning stations. The Thargoid incursions are much much tougher to clear by conventional means these days than they ever have been before. Salvation's weapon, whatever it is, takes a huge amount of effort to fire. Large numbers of commanders acting in a community goal in fact and the 27% attrition rate it appears to deliver is far from a spectacular result when attempting to wipe out a furious nest of spacefaring angry mega insects that know where you live. As we reported previously Frontier had to postpone their community meet and greet in Cambridge UK near the companys office due to the UK's pandemic situation. It was due to take place on the 10th of December with proceeds from the limited ticket sales for the event going to the gaming charity special effect. Now scheduled for the 25th of February tickets for the meet do however now come with an unexpected added bonus. In lieu of the pre Christmas meetup ticket holders will instead be invited to a virtual meetup with the community team online on Friday the 17th of December. Tickets for the event are still available and there's a link in the video description if you want to bag some for yourself. This weeks Super Cruise News livestream took place in its regular Tuesday afternoon slot and was highlighted by not one but two developer interviews centered around the new Scorpion Combat SRV that arrived in Elite Dangerous Odyssey last week. The first was with senior designer Tom Kewell who talks at length during the interview about the fascinating iterative process behind the creation of the SRVs handling and the equally fascinating design and thought processes behind that unusual firing mechanic on the vehicles main gun and why, from a game design perspective, it fires the way it does. It's a fantastic in depth interview, Tom's enthusiasm really shines through and it features some explanatory behind the scenes video showing how the vehicles features were built upon during its design process. The second interview is with UI designer Henry Turner and gives some really interesting and unexpected insights into the design of the Scorpions heads up display. During the interview Henry revealed for example that he generally develops a new interface in languages like German or Russian first as they tend to have longer words than his native English and he needs to make allowances for the text fitting on the screen in all languages once it's fully regionalized. The interview is again peppered with plenty of behind the scenes artwork from when the vehicle was being developed to illustrate what's being talked about. I have to say I'm really enjoying these new pre-recorded dev interviews the team at Frontier seem to be trialling at the moment and I'm really keen to see more of them as they give some fascinating insights into the thinking behind why things are designed the way they are in the game and are just a really interesting look behind the curtain. As always I've linked below to the YouTube archive of the stream. Whilst we're talking streams a reminder that Frontiers much anticipated Christmas livestream is happening on Thursday this week. The Christmas stream is the final stream of the year, it's planned to be longer than usual Thursday streams and starts at 1800 UTC with one of the highlights being a developer tour of the new fleet carrier interiors that were accidentally leaked last week. We expect this stream will be showing the carrier interior in a much more advanced stage of development with a lot more of its functionality in place and should be well worth checking out. The carrier segment is not the only feature of the stream and if it's anything like previous years it should be a lot of fun to round off the year in Elite Dangerous. Update 9 landed in Elite Dangerous Horizons and Elite Dangerous Odyssey across PC and consoles last week as well as adding the Scorpion SRV to Odyssey and the Multi Limpet Controller to Horizons and Odyssey. 
The update unfortunately brought with it a number of bugs. These issues persisted over the weekend for all platforms and a patch late on Monday whilst repairing some issues didn't fix some of the bigger ones. As of this video problems persist with the exploration handheld scanning device on Odyssey largely preventing exobiology gameplay. Also update 9 wiped many players fire groups from their ships and a number of players have since been unable to manually re-add their fire groups making large portions of the rest of the game unplayable. Frontiers community team have acknowledged the issues commanders are experiencing and stated as part of the livestream last night that a new hotfix was being worked on for deployment into the game before the Christmas break arrives. There's no word from the dev team yet on what specifically the patch will address or when it will arrive but as soon as we know we'll let you know on this very channel so make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss that. Do you think Theta7 is really out of the picture and if he is will the starport attacks from the NMLA at least now stop? And what do you think about Salvation's latest use of the mysterious super weapon? Will it make things better or worse? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.